Today we are back talking Mac Jones. What's up guys, what's going on? My name is Max Brown, current football analyst, former quarterback at USC and Pittsburgh here to talk about a guy. You guys all say I look like Joe Burrow. I kind of think I look like Mac Jones a little bit. Maybe that'll start a whole new thread in the comments, but either way, we're talking about the pocket passer, former Alabama quarterback. He has slowly in my eyes become kind of the most intriguing quarterback in this draft, which I know people are gonna point to maybe Trey Lance right now, but Mac Jones, the fact that he is penciled in right now as going number three in the draft. When I made my first breakdown about Mac Jones, I was talking about him in a similar light as Kyle Trask. Don't sleep on Kyle Trask. But the fact that now we're sitting here saying Mac Jones is going three to the Niners, you would have told me that back in January and February. But hey, I respect the fact that it's not all about the flash. It's not all about the athleticism and the arm strength. It is about production. Mac Jones has certainly produced. And in this video, I'll be breaking down his throws from his pro day. It's the NFL Network cast. I'll be talking over it, giving you guys my thoughts. And without further ado, let's dive in. some of that movement boy that's on the money they just talked about it first thing i noticed right away is mac jones looking to make a statement throw the rock on the run he knows that everyone knows that the mobility question for mac jones is the number one question tries to prove a point right away i respect it hey dj on the move there and again about a yeah. third of his throws uh dj are going to be from uh, some sort of movement this uh pro day shirt is helping him out he uh looks big they, the bama equipment guys know what they're doing it's 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 solid compact up top but hey we all know mac isn't necessarily the most cut dude and it's got some uh some wiggle room down below uh, inside out. we have so much tape of him navigating within the pocket and making touch timing throws showing you that anticipation the accuracy so today is about trying. We've talked about this before, though. After incompletion, how do you respond? Right there, we can see on his face right there, he's smiling. He's trying to be relaxed and kind of brush it off. I like that. Better that than getting all intense. But huge factor when evaluating quarterbacks. How do they respond after they messed up? Let's see what he does right here. But again, if you go back to game tape and you see his accuracy and his composure in those times when he's under pressure, you know, sometimes we'll see these workouts and we'll see where a ball's maybe a little overthrown or underthrown or a little bit too wide. I don't get too caught up on that in workouts, nor do I overrate it if everything is spot on. It's what you see in game film and, again, when he's, when he's playing the actual quarterback position and about to get hit in the mouth. Hey, a real quick thing that I want to talk about right there, just watching him come in and out of a huddle and being able to run a huddle it's one of these things we talk about as scouts and evaluators and gms and coaches now is there's a lot of players that are now coming in the, into the national football league at the quarterback position that don't know how to run a huddle and his leadership ability and his ability to bring people together communicate and then get people to do their jobs is pretty darn good I like that point right there. It's not insignificant. I know for me, jumping from high school to college, and I entered an NFL scheme with Lane Kiffin back in the day, that's 2013, simply operating a huddle was the biggest adjustment for me early on. Sounds crazy. All my quarterbacks out there know exactly what I'm talking about. It's an entire different beast knowing and learning the plays when you're sitting at a desk just with a binder full of plays than it is on the turf, on the grass, with guys waiting around you. You have to spit out the play quickly in a concise manner. It's a lot harder than you might think. And if for if you're a quarterback that's never operated that, that can be an adjustment. And we've talked about this before, little things become big things. If that's one more thing you're thinking about as a young quarterback, that matters. I like that point, not insignificant. Mac Jones well-equipped to uh, attack that in the NFL. That's to me why you wanna see some of that movement around today. Don't focus on the end result. Let's just see how natural and how smooth he looks doing it. So my take right there on the movement aspect of this pro day, um, and I've seen bits and pieces, there's one aspect of, all right, can he operate the throws on the run? That's why you want to see the movement from Mac Jones. But the second piece to that is I want to see, can Mac Jones do it two plays in a row, three plays in a row? This is as much of a conditioning element if he's really leaning into the, the, the mobility throws as it is, can he do it? Any of these throws a quarterback can do once. And that was kind of my pet peeve a little bit with some of the Justin Fields and Zach Wilson throws because I know there's a lot of quarterbacks out there. The, the, the throws, you guys know what I'm talking about, the ones that are like 60 yards bombs they're impressive don't get me wrong i'm not saying they're not but 
I think most NFL quarterbacks watch that film and they're like, man, I could do that. And it's not even them just being arrogant. It's, hey, a quarterback can do it one time. They can they can piece it together that, that one time, the one throw that had been practicing a bunch and they knew that was going to happen. But the guys that are elite, the guys that can really operate at a high level, can they do it time in and time out? And with Mac Jones, the mobility is a question, sure. But can he do one throw on the run? Yes. But I want to see him do it three times in a row. I want to see him do it when he's tired. I want to see how his body responds to that. I want to see how his mechanics respond to that. So there's kind of two factors to the mobility question with Mac Jones. Something to keep your eye on both in this pro day and then also as he gets to the NFL. Snapping the ball here to... Mac Jones is one of the best uh, centers in this year's class, one of the best interior offensive linemen. Landon Dickerson coming off a torn ACL, uh, suffered at the tail end of Alabama's championship run. Not bad, but not great. I feel like I got to have love for Mac Jones. We got like the same haircut there. My fade, you know, we're locked in a little bit better, but hey. We'll get there in time. He's got more hair than I do. But I, uh, hey, pocket passer. He played for Sark. I used to play for Sark. I got, I got love for Mac Jones. With that said, I have heavy doubts of whether he's actually going three. I think Fields should go three, but we'll see come draft day. Again, you can see the relationship between he and Mac Jones at the quarterback. They cultivated and developed a really important relationship. It's either going to go right or it's going to go wrong. And when you watch players like this, Mac Jones, who really connects well with his teammates, Landon Dickerson, who connects well with his teammates, it's great to pay attention to. Wayne, his throwing session here from Alabama's Pro Day. Brett Lewis, Daniel Jeremiah, Scott Pioli here with you. Now let's go down to the pro day tip for Mac Jones. All you pocket passers out there, don't wear black cleats on your pro day. If you if you're struggling to get mobility, we need white. We need white socks, white cleats. White is slick. White is uh, is more speedy. Black looks a little clunky. A. Whoever's advising the, uh, the, I guess at Alabama they like only wear black cleats, so I guess, dang it, that doesn't really count. But I'm pretty sure they can make an exception for a first-round quarterback talent. Mac Jones should have gone with the white cleats. That's why your boy, outside of, I guess, yeah, at SC we had to wear black, but high school, I was all white. Had to be as dual threat as I could be. It's quite the a relationship of laughter during the time those measurements were going on. As you're watching Mac Jones throw these balls, it was some interesting notes that I got from him and talking to people around the program leading into this is, one, you see Dying. that deep ball there. They don't question his arm strength. They do believe it is enough at the next level. And then also something with Mac Jones that a lot of people don't talk about. They said he actually really likes the creative off-platform throws. You know, they said he, he can do the no-look stuff. He actually likes moving around and throwing from different platforms. And that's a big part of his preparation over the last couple of months since that national championship game was to make sure he works on all of these things. And he better say that. I mean, whether that's true or not, he better say that. Because if he said, you know what, I'm not big on the off-the-platform throws. I'm not big on moving around. Then guys would be like, man, we don't we, we don't want to touch this guy. So, of course, he says that. Um, that one little tidbit right there of Mac Jones can do the no look throws. I do not want Mac Jones ever doing a no look throw. That's not in his game. That's not what he does. Get get out of here with that. We're not having Mac Jones do no look throws. I think my man may have, I don't know, misspoke or whatever, but Mac Jones needs to operate from the pocket. If we're having Mac Jones out there doing no look throws outside of the pocket, then whatever team he lands on, they're in trouble. That are so prominent in the NFL when things don't go right <laughs> and it happens for your quarterback how are you able to go and still make plays when things aren't exactly where you want them and, and we've talked so much about the competitiveness and I think this has a really good pace to it from the pro days that I have been at that he loves Mac Jones will never make his money outside of the pocket I want to see him be able to move right and move left but his ability to make plays as they were talking about when things break down is totally going to be dependent on how fast he can get to his check down how well does he master the offense? How well, how quickly can he get the ball out of his hands? He is never in a million years going to be a dual threat guy that's going to break people down and buy you a bunch of extra time to, to, to make a play. No, his extra play, his special moment, his getting you out of a bad situation is going to be getting the ball in the hands of a playmaker as fast as he can, a la a running back, a la a check down. That is his special play. We're talking one step over, one step up. We're talking one step back, one step over. We're not talking big time, no look, breaking outside of the pocket. That's that's not Mac Jones. Those other guys that uh, the young quarterbacks in the league right now possess. Another deep shot here from Mac Jones. I, and I agree. Go ahead, Scott. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I I was about to love him up. That's the mobility exactly like I'm talking about. That play right there, it's just one step to the left, one step up, 
then he misses the throw deep. But that's the in the pocket mobility we're talking about. We're not breaking the pocket. No, not not with Jones. Angle in, in questions that are asked, and, and I would say this: I think sometimes people get will get focused on the negative and trying to find out what a player can't do or where he won't go. Sure. But what I've seen in my you know 27 years in the league, I've seen a lot of players that have much higher ceilings and had that room for growth and just can't get it done for whatever their reasons are, whether it's their makeup, whether it's their work habits, whether it's their work ethic, you know, just because someone has a ceiling, you know, a, a famous coach once, once said, uh, you show me a person with a, where a coach keeps on saying he has a lot of potential, I'll show you a kid that hasn't done anything. <laughs> so now someone can have potential, someone can have a high ceiling, but we've seen a lot of players, particularly at the quarterback position, with incredible tools, but they just can't seem to find a way to get out of their own way. And uh, I don't think that'll be the case with Mac. but it's a very, very fair question to ask as to where is his ceiling. I'll answer that question. Where is his ceiling? His ceiling is lower than the other quarterbacks. That's not a bold take. That's not a surprising take. But I think Mac Jones, if he goes three, he will break the mold of when you draft a quarterback in the top five, he has to have a high ceiling. If Mac Jones goes at three, you are banking on the fact that he might not have a high ceiling, but he has a high floor. And that even if you are off with a Mac Jones, he's at least serviceable. And he can at least win you football games. His ceiling is lower than most. His floor is higher than most. And it could be a very unique breaking the mold pick if the Niners go with him at three because we really haven't seen that. Top of my head, I can't see a just safe, relatively low ceiling quarterback get drafted first round. Nothing's coming to mind, at least in recent memories. Drop a comment down below if you uh, disagree. And you might say, no, like even like a, like a Trevor Lawrence, like we know what he is. We know he's great. He still has a high ceiling. He can still be, he, I think a lot of people think he will be elite. I think he'll be, I think he'll be special, but uh, there's levels to the whole ceiling dilemma. Those teams I've talked to really have said, you know, with Mac, the reason they have that question is they do believe he's one of the best processors uh, coming out at the quarterback position. Uh, in this draft and, and the way he plays the game mentally and the work ethic. Ding, 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 ding. That say, that word right there, processors. That, that statement that uh, my man just made right there. If someone asks you why Mac Jones went three above Justin Fields, it's that right there. I think Mac Jones is a better processor than Justin Fields. And when, when Justin Fields is running around in the pocket and making people miss and it's fun to watch in highlight films, Mac Jones' version of that is going to be, hey, I processed really quickly and I got the ball out to my running back and I gave him the rock early and now he's able to do something with it. It might not be as flashy, but that's where Mac Jones is going to make his money. And if he goes three and if three years from now, 10 years from now, he's a stud and we're all looking back and watching this video, it's going to be because Mac Jones is an elite processor. That one word, you don't always hear that a lot in NFL breakdowns. I think it's a strong suit of Mac Jones. How he's able to carry that with him uh, to the next level will decide whether or not he's a successful NFL quarterback. As well, and I think one of the interesting parts that, that guys around here at L in the program talk about is if that he understands the long not. game, sees things a couple of steps ahead, and he has a mentality that this may happen and this may not happen right now, but I'm preparing for it. The best quote that I got from him was from David Morris, and I know, Rhett, you spoke to him as well, is that is productive paranoia is the term that he used, and that was from Jim Collins' book of, you know, good to great, great by choice. He is just paranoid almost that he will not be prepared, and that's where you see those calls at the Senior Bowl coming at 2.30 in the morning. That's where you see his constant work ethic and working on installs and, and doing different things that, that whole week at the Senior Bowl. He has this almost paranoia that I think we know some of the greats around the league in the history of our game have had at the quarterback position that they just can't prepare enough as you see him make another throw kind of off platform and, and, and I like that point and to me I, I view it as process oriented rather than the long-term game because there's two sides to that right I mean he can't be in the long-term game forever he's got to produce right away especially if he's at the number three overall pick the whole long game thing yeah there's certain truth to that but it's also NFL not for long you gotta <laughs> you gotta produce early and often but I do think their point about him sticking it out of Alabama and staying the, the full five years and kind of 
trust in the process and being process oriented, that matters because Mac Jones does not remind me of a guy that if he does struggle in his rookie year or he does struggle the first few games of his rookie year or he starts throwing interceptions, he's not going to get completely derailed, which matters in the NFL. It's never going to be perfect, especially with a lot of these quarterbacks that have had fairly comfortable situations in college. I mean, Once again, Mac Jones, he had a good setup in Alabama that last year. Take it from a guy who lived it firsthand. It's not easy to sit on the bench. It's not easy to sit there and see your clock wind down. But Mac Jones is a guy that trusted the process, trusted his work, was confident that it was going to pay off. His credit, it did. He's about to cash in right now. But I think that overall maturity, I like their point. I do think that matters. And especially if he's punched in the mouth early on. I feel confident that uh, he's going to dig in and he won't get derailed maybe as much as potentially some of the other quarterbacks at the, uh, the top of the draft. When you talk about the processing, that's where the comparison to Joe Burrow comes in from those that have worked closely you know, with Matt Joe Jones Burrow, like David Morrissey. Talking about you know, if, if we go back to last year's evaluation of Burrow and talking about one of the most elite qualities that he... We talked about that in the Mac uh, Jones breakdown earlier. If you haven't seen that breakdown, I'll link it up above. I went through Mac Jones' strengths, weaknesses, what I like, areas of concern, everything like that. Check it out above. But the intermediate routes, you can see in this pro day, he's thrown a corner, he's thrown a couple overs, even the comebacks, extremely smooth, extremely catchable ball. And the one difference with pro day versus game film is obviously there's no defense. That's a obvious statement. But one of Mac Jones' strengths that's not going to be able to completely come through in the pro day is his ball placement. He has a knack for doing that, and those windows get tighter than the NFL. That's a good sign. He possessed was his ability to take it from the huddle to reading the defense to progression once the ball snapped to execution and figuring out where the ball needs to go uh, once it is snapped there. And, and talking about how elite Burrow was in that category maybe this is just me i don't like the tempo of this pro day it feels a little slow especially when one of mac jones's biggest questions is kind of the whole mobility speed thing maybe i'm overanalyzing it i know this is a compiled set of plays but the tempo seems a little slow is that just me let me know in that uh, in, in that sense and then you know the question then becomes physically like, yeah there's some let's differences go. let's go but, but how close All do right. you see the level between a guy like mac uh, from the shoulders up to a guy like Burrow. Well, we use the word quick. That throw right there, always keep your eye on it, especially when evaluating quarterbacks. That post corner, especially when you're on the numbers, because you run out of grass, right? It all rewind it. From the shoulders up. You have to throw that ball early, and if you don't throw that ball early, you either you have to have arm strength, because you run out of grass very quickly. I mean, he's just, this receiver's just getting out of his break right here, and there's not a ton of grass right there, yet, there, yet the receiver is 10, 20, 30, almost 35 yards away from Mac Jones. This is a big league throw. When you talk about throws that really pique the interest of evaluators, it's the 10 yard out, it's the comeback, and I like this post corner right here. Um, And it's the time post as well. The timing routes, those are the ones that you always gotta keep your eye on because slants, quarterbacks have been doing that forever. It's the timing routes that test both your ability to trust your fundamentals and ball placement, but also the arm strength and, and, and accuracy as well. Away from pressure and uh, and kind of showed you what type of athlete he was. So to me, the- little thing right there, little thing. Watch Mac Jones's eyes, watch his eyes. The, right, this three seconds right here. I'm getting away from pressure Pop. and- uh- Love that. All you young quarterbacks out there, you go to a camp, most quarterbacks are going to take their eyes down right away, just very subtly every time they get a get a snap. Mac Jones, his eyes are downfield. That's a red flag for me if I see a quarterback, especially in their pro day, and you'll see it a little bit. It's not a big thing. It's just a little flash down. They're ensuring that they're going to get the ball. They're not trusting their hands. They're not trusting their preparation. They're not comfortable with their center. You can tell Mac Jones, very comfortable under center offense. That's noteworthy, depending on the scheme he goes to and and the fit there. But you quarterback fans, always keep your eye on that, especially when you're watching pro days or high school quarterbacks, younger quarterbacks, guys that say, hey, I can can go under center. I'm comfortable under center. If their eyes go down right away, right when they first get the snap, they're not comfortable going, uh, going from under center. Keep your eye on that. Oskaloosa, Alabama, Rhett Lewis, Daniel Jeremiah, Scott Pioli, James Palmer down on the field for us. That was my pet peeve with the Trey Lance thing, man. This is pro day right here. You got 
you got most te- you got almost every NFL team watching right there. That ball's got to be caught, man. That ball's got to be caught. Scott Pioli, James Paul. Right there, you say you have to catch this football. You go from uh, throwing to Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle, and no, no offense to the guys out there. I mean, they're sure. they're they're working hard, and this has a good pace to it, but. Uh, he just, he's gone from, from driving, driving a Maserati to uh, maybe a little bit of a pickup truck here. So you can see how it'd be hard to gauge. <laughs> That's a good point. I'm probably being too critical. And, uh, about the pace as well, I forgot. I'm not sure how many receivers they have out there. So it could be a making sure the receivers don't die. I know my pro day at Pitt, uh, when I was throwing there, we only had like four receivers, which sounds like a lot. But when you're talking, but when you're talking overs and corners and deep balls and whatnot, that can really get after receivers. I was wrong there. I'll admit it. Pace is a different animal for receivers. All you receivers out there, I got love for you. Especially receivers that help out the quarterbacks when they're training in the offseason, getting out there, running routes. Always got love for you guys. So I was wrong. I take back my pace uh, comment earlier on. Uh, with your accuracy. And, and Scott, I've been told, you know, that some of the most impressive throws. We saw in the beginning, or we were told in the beginning of this that a third of Mac Jones's plays were going to be on the run. Um, unless this video that I'm watching is, is, is flawed a little bit. We have not seen that. I guess there's been movement, but it hasn't been, I guess, as much movement as I, as I would have thought with how they preface this pro day. Yeah, how many times we've had now where players have come out in the draft and you go through all their tape and one of the coaches, the quarterback coach, or the offensive coordinator will say, hey, do we have any snaps with this guy taking the ball from under center? Does he know how to play from under center? Can he see the field from under the center? You know, because again, on that shotgun snap, that gives when a, a quarterback's in that position, he can see the field a little bit better and a little bit. It's a different perception or it's a different view, certainly. I'll say this. If you're a quarterback that has the red flag that we're not sure if you can take a snap from under center and you go out in your pro day and you do not address that red flag and you do not do, you do not showcase in your pro day that you can take snaps from under center, that is a glaring red flag for me. So I'm not sure exactly what pro days they're referencing, but that to me is a huge red flag if you ever see that as an evaluator. I like the point they said early on when the pro day started is your pro day is an opportunity to fill the cracks. Any areas of concern where you're like, eh, I'm not sure if Mac Jones can do this. Eh, I'm not sure if this is a strong suit. Mac Jones, if you are a top five NFL quarterback, you should be going down the list of every red flag that you have and trying to check the boxes off. He's never going to be a 4-4-40 guy. He's never going to be a dual threat guy, but he can showcase that I can move around a little bit like we just saw right there. I still want to see some more bootleg and some more testing on the run type throws. It's one thing to break the pocket and throw downhill when your weight's moving forward. It's a different animal when people are chasing you or you're, you have to be off balance, or you're throwing against your body. That's the next level um, athleticism, mobility things. I'll wanna see him check off and I, I bet he'll do it later on in his pro day, but just food for thought there in terms of if you don't address a red flag as a quarterback in your pro day, and maybe take this for any quarterbacks watching, if whether you're a high school quarterback making your highlight film, you already know the red flags that coach or the, the potential concerns coaches are going to have for me I wasn't the most athletic quarterback per se so early on in my highlight film in my high school highlight film I'm showing my athletic plays I'm showing my ability to escape the pocket I'm, I'm showing my off balance off platform throws because in, in many respects I was a similar quarterback to Mac Jones when you can control the environment as a quarterback address those red flags that coaches might have about your game short and intermediate shallow crosses but again I think what we saw what we were able to see this year um, especially early on, is when he has to throw the deep ball. There we go. I, I like the first half. I don't like the second half. I like the first half, right? We just talked about it. That's the throwing against your body. That's moving one way and then testing your athleticism to re- go out the other side. What I don't like is that's the dang no-look throw. The, ma- the the new school, looking cool, no-look throw. That That's not that's not Mac Jones's game. Daniel Jeremiah's number 34th ranked overall prospect in the number. All right, I was totally wrong with the pace comment. You saw the receivers. Now the receivers are not running full routes because they're so gassed. So I was I was wrong. Hey, my mistake. Tempo. They're 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 looking out for their receivers. I'll say this though. There's got to be some Alabama receivers that are still trying to make a team somewhere out there that you could get them to come for a pro day. I mean, I remember back in my SC days. There's there's guys two, three, four, five years removed that are still one foot in, one foot out of the NFL, trying to get on a team. They'd run some rounds. I don't know. Just thinking out loud right here. Coach, it gives you a chance to get some more eyeballs on these players live and in person, and especially in a year where your scouts weren't able to guys. 
straight point per NFL rules this year. DJ, Only uh, three representatives. That last throw right there, that was big league. I love that throw. Let's check out that is not doing that because it, it just creates more opportunity for your guys. Great point per NFL rules this year. DJ, Only uh, three represent. 10, 20, 30 yards. I like that. that. was crisp. DJ, I believe I've seen you at the Dreamland location, not only in Tuscaloosa, but the one in Mobile. I believe I have seen you. There's probably <laughs> right, photographic course. evidence of you throwing down some of that appetizer. Of the Wonder the, Bread. The, the, the white. It's easy to really focus in on kind of the mobility questions, and I feel like that's something I keep coming back to. But the other potential area of concern that people are having is the arm strength. You can tell they're trying to address that in this pro day as well. We've seen D4, maybe getting to five, like deep posts, deep long shot footballs. Mac Jones is trying to prove a point that arm strength is uh, is not an area of concern. And with that, I'm, I'm good with his arm strength. I, I don't think it's something that's going to wow you per se, but it's by no means a uh, a, a red flag for me. Bread and the, and the sauce. <laughs> exactly right, the barbecue sauce. Absolutely. Working in through these throws here for Mac Jones, uh, starting to get towards the tail end of, of this workout. The accuracy of it. What we we're talking about here and what you really want to look at and a lot of the tape is going to be looked at from this perspective right here is they are trying to showcase arm talent. They're saying, all right, scouts, Mac Jones, he, he is what he is in terms of mobility. And I actually kind of respect that. Right now, we've seen that last three throws and we saw it early on in the pro day. They're trying to say, hey, this guy isn't necessarily a system quarterback. This guy wasn't just a byproduct of having elite playmakers around him. They're trying to say, hey, this dude can make some big time throws and he's worth that number three overall pick. I was a little hesitant when I wasn't necessarily seeing exactly what I thought I'd see early on. I kind of respect it now in terms of them. They're putting it all out there as they should and let Mac Jones showcase what he's got, which is great downfield accuracy and, and arm talent. What part of his body he's using to get the ball deep? How much is his core? How much is his hips? How much is his arm? How much is he using his legs? And to me, you know, DJ... In other words, how effortless is it? That's a huge point for me. When you are throwing deep balls or when you have to throw a football on a line 30, 40 yards, how effortless is it for you? You can get more granular with it, right? How much is he using his lower body? How efficient is his motion? But how effortless are those throws are a big evaluation point. After watching the Pro Day, it's kind of funny because us fans, us media members, we like the Pro Day. It's fun to look at, it's fun to evaluate. But Mac Jones is never gonna like win you over because of a Pro Day, right? He's not necessarily gonna wow you in shorts and a t-shirt. He's not gonna have some unreal Real throw like a Zach Wilson or a Justin Fields and it goes like viral on social media. It's not necessarily Mac Jones. But if you're not necessarily drafting Mac Jones because of what he shows on a pro day, what you are drafting Mac Jones for is all the intangibles, all the behind the scenes stuff that we don't know, how he talks, how he works, how his coaches and teammates talk about him, the connection he has with the coaches, the level of respect he has, the grittiness, the leadership, all those intangibles. That's why you would make Mac Jones a top five NFL draft pick. And like I said in the video, it's kind of refreshing for so long you, we've seen quarterbacks get drafted on hype, on potential, on what they could be. Don't get me wrong, that's a big factor. And Mac Jones is a guy that can break the mold. He's a guy that just does what the play is asked of him consistently, time in and time out. Which as I say that might be obvious, but hey, Mac Jones excels at it. In that pro day, you could tell they were really trying to prove a point with the deep balls. We talked about that. Arm strength with Mac Jones, not a concern for me, but I'll say this. Even after doing the breakdowns, even after watching and reading everything, my gut still thinks it's Justin Fields at three. But we shall see. I appreciate you guys checking this out. If you missed my Mac Jones breakdown from before, I'll link it up above. Be sure to check that out. And as you guys know, I'll be back for some more content. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button down below to not miss anything, and I'll see you guys here next time.